Welcome to the Big Roofs Podcast, the podcast where we talk to successful roofing contractors and industry leaders about how you can build a bigger, better, more profitable roofing business. We're your hosts, John and AJ, and today's guest is Joe Hughes, founder of Contractor Dynamics. Thanks for joining us today, Joe. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, good to catch up with you guys and uh, chop it up a little bit here. Absolutely. Happy to have you on. Um, let's start by just for those that don't know, can you walk through contractor dynamics and what it is that you offer to contractors? What do you do for contractors? Yeah. So most contractors, most roofing companies, which is kind of our bread and butter, don't have a way to consistently generate their own inbound appointments and sales. They don't have a way to kind of build their brand and differentiate in their market, in most markets, there's so many roofing companies these days. It's really hard to stand out, differentiate, communicate your value, and to find your ideal prospects. And so a lot of contractors are out there buying leads. They're investing in you know different marketing agencies and marketers and things like that. And they don't really know, like the roofing company owner, leaders, they don't really know you know, what they're doing. And I, I don't say that in like a disparaging way. It's just like you get into roofing because you're, you know, you're good at sales, or you're good at install. Most people don't get into roofing with a like a marketing background, right? So it's just a skill, a business skill that we need to develop. So we actually uh, train roofing companies on how to build and run their own marketing so that they can take more control over their brand and their growth. And they can be able to run some of their own marketing in-house and then they can also outsource some of it, but when they're outsourcing it, they're more educated on, on how to do that and how to collaborate with their outsource partners. So at the end of the day, we're a marketing education company for the roofing industry. Yeah. I love that. Is that, I always, answer? Is that... No, that's, that's phenomenal. Great. That was, that was very concise. I, um, my background, I, my first business was a marketing business, marketing agency. And one thing I always tell guys now is the most expensive part you'll pay for is the strategy the actual yeah. work that's getting done i mean it's it's, still, it's a lot of work but the strategy is is what you pay for more than anything else it sounds like you're giving them the tools to know the strategy so they can yes. if they need help they can just buy it but they don't have to pay someone for the strategy is that yeah well and that's the thing like i know a lot of people listening are you know they're paying a marketing agency right and we ran the agency for seven years from 2013 to 2019 and and uh, after we figured out what we were doing after the first couple of years, we started charging like upfront for that strategy. So instead of like, okay, you're going to sign up with uh, contractor dynamics, it's going to be, you know, three grand a month, right? Like that's what every marketing agency does. We started saying like, hey, it's going to be, you know, 10 or some like some of the bigger clients for more than 25 grand upfront to build out your strategy. And then we'll start the monthly because yeah, there is so much work that goes into that. And just as a point of education for any contractors out there, like, you know, most marketing agencies are going to dive right in and they're going to start doing the work without like asking you like, Hey, like what, like, you know, what do you want out of this business? What are your goals or your ideal clients? They're just going to kind of like try to get you a quantity of leads and fulfill their quota so they can look good. But yeah, there's not a lot of strategy being done. And that's why like most marketing just doesn't work. Yeah. Just like a shotgun shotgun against the wall yeah like let's plug it in and start generating leads like dude that worked back in the days you probably know you guys both probably know like mm -hmm. 2015 16 17 like that worked really well like these days that doesn't work anymore you know there's no. so much noise and competition out there it's crazy yeah oh it's the market is changing so fast it seems like what what um and we can we can get into this more later, but one of the things I wanted to kind of I wanted to ask you about is where you see the market going as far as leads and lead generation. How is it changing now, and how what's the trends that you're seeing? Oh man, uh, yeah. I mean, everything's changing. Every platforms are changing, algorithms are changing, and things like that. But that's like the you know that's the tactical stuff. Like the real like zooming out strategy stuff is really like how consumers, how we are all making purchasing decisions. And, you know, I talk about this a lot in my content. It's like for the contractors out there that, that want to do some marketing, they want to throw some ads out there. They want to run some Google ads, Facebook ads, you know, whatever it might be. Like they have this expectation. Too many people have the expectation of I'm going to put one ad out there and I'm going to generate 
a bunch of leads. But like when you think about how you make purchasing decisions, especially for like large ticket items like a vehicle or a roof or a pool or any contracting service, those are companies that you see over and over and over. And you don't just see one single ad and say, oh, these guys look good. Let me just give them a shot. You know, here's 20 grand or if it's insurance, you know, deductible, here's two grand. And here's like, I'm going to trust you to put on my roof because I saw one ad. Like it does not work that way. So really like, brand is really everything. And brand is your reputation. Like, like, what are you known for? You know, what do people know you for? Are you the premium guy? Are you the cheap guy? Are you the high touch concierge service company? Um, are you the, the company that calls people back and shows up on time and communicates with prospects? All those things go into your brand. And just think about the way that like we, I, I bought something at Dick's Sporting Goods on Saturday, uh, Mother's Day present for my wife. I, I don't do a lot of online shopping outside of my business. Um, my wife handles most of that, but obviously the Mother's Day holidays and things like that, I, I need to try to figure it out, right? So like I go on dicks.com, I order this thing for pickup at the store. They're texting me like, okay, you can leave home now. The thing's ready. I get there, you go on the app, you check in. Uh, hey, I'm wearing a green hoodie. Someone brings it out to me. It's like the most, like the best, the best experience ever. So easy, right? And so like, just that's how we're conditioned to like doing business these days. So you look at, you ask like where things are going, like the companies that can nail down that process and just like really like keep their, their prospects and customers in the loop, communication, like basic stuff. Those are the companies that are going to, they're going to crush it, right? Because that's that's how we demand to do business these days, whether Amazon, Dix, you know, whatever it might be, Proline, you know. Um, so yeah, I see that. That's that's huge. Those touch points, you know, communication, follow up. Um, yeah, I'm trying to get some landscaping work done. I'm waiting for four different companies to get back to me right now. Wow. And I know it's sure it's May, it's busy season, sure, but like it's ridiculous, it's insane. It makes me want to start a landscaping company just to like implement some of these things, just like a simple app to like, hey, we're going to be there, you know, Tuesday at six. Like, okay, we're 15 minutes away. We'll be there. Here's a follow up, like basic stuff Yeah, that, you know, most contractors still aren't doing in 2024. So, yeah, we had a conversation today about um, a contractor who uses Roof Quote Pro. Great tool. There's, there's a lot of instant roof estimator tools out there. Um, and they were like, we have so many leads coming through. But then, you know, he said basically seven out of 10 of the of the leads are just ghosting them. I'm like, so let's talk about your process. And he's like, um, he's an awesome guy, really passionate about doing this, but he does it part time. And I'm like, that's mm. not going to work, man. Like they're, mm. they're, the company is growing. There's a couple owners uh, and he they've tasked him to deal with like they're mostly insurance work and he they've tasked him to deal with all the retail work. But he gave me a timeline of how this works. And I was like, when you reach out to the customer, like how quickly, and I just kind of talked about our process and how, about how, you know, roof Coat pro sent, sent me that cause that contractor because of pro line. And yeah. I said, you know, not only are we sending automated texts and emails when they use roof Coat pro, but they're, they are getting a call from Kathleen within our average is 38 seconds. And he's Whoa. like, what? he's like, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah, you just told me you call him back in an hour. That's unacceptable. You can't do that. Um, you got to, I was nicer than that, but yeah, we, we all have to be way the Dick sporting goods analogy was what made me think of this because it's perfect. Like that's yeah. what, that's how you want to buy things. I know it's not a big ticket item, but that's how we want to be treated as consumers. And we all need to be stepping our games. I mean, we're trying to, we're trying to work on seconds here. Like we're trying to, we don't want them to scroll to the next, you know, Google local service ad and click that next button. We have to beat them to it. They need a text, an email, a phone call right away, and then keep them up to date the whole process. Like there's no reason why we all have measurement tools. Why are we not getting them an estimate within 12 or 24 hours every single time? There's no reason why we, I mean, it, it, even more so, why are you not giving them an estimate the customer estimate when you meet them the first time, like, yeah. why, why are you not doing that? Like it, I know it's not possible for every market and every business, but like faster and accurate and better customer experience is way better. I mean, if, if what, what would happen if one of those 
four landscape companies that give you an estimate right now? Like, what, where would you be sitting? Like, I have one choice right now. Like, yeah, the other three, the other three yeah. you're like, well, please give me an estimate so I can compare these. Like, you and you already showed that company already showed that they're standing out. Uh, and we get jobs all the time just because of the communication piece, not necessarily pro line, but just having your process. The automations definitely help, but having that mm. process with your team to give that customer experience. And I'm just hammering it home. And like, my team is like, we get it. We get it. And like, no, no, I don't think you get it. Like they're, they're scrolling. People are oh, scrolling yeah. and they're, and they're, you know, the next company is going to come around and get that roof. So we, we have to be efficient and uh, give that excellent experience. Yeah. Or they might just not do anything. Right. Which, you know, it's actually better because then they're still in the market. You know, even if it's a year later, sure. they still haven't gotten a roof. Right. But like, yeah, the landscaping thing. I mean, I, uh, it's not huge. So I was like, yeah, I really don't want to do it. I want to delegate it, you know, try to delegate and elevate. Right. Um, but my wife and I just talked this morning. I'm like, you know what? Saturday's open. Let, we're just, let, it's probably more time efficient for me to just knock it out on Saturday than to try to go back and forth with all these clowns and like schedule things. And I'm pretty rigid. Like, so I get that. Like, I'm not going to I'm not going to meet a landscaper at two in the afternoon because my time is more valuable at two in the afternoon, right? Like running my business. So I am pretty tight with my, I'm pretty rigid with my schedule, but whatever. Yeah. I mean, we <laughs> go down a rabbit hole there, but I mean, yeah, you asked about that, AJ. I, I think that's, I think that's, you know, that's, that's huge. And that does relate to marketing. It's not necessarily like lead gen, but, you know, I think too many of these contractors like, they have these, you know, the holes in the bucket, right? You guys know that analogy and they're trying to stuff more leads in the top, but there's all these holes in the bucket. So they're just wasting so much time and opportunity where you might not need that many leads. If you just like shore up that bucket and make sure that everything's tight and you have these systems like you're talking about, John. Yeah. You made another really good point too, about like your time is more valuable. It doesn't, I mean, it's going to vary on the market and vary on the socioeconomic level of that customer and who your client, your ideal customer is. It de- everyone's time is valuable. It yeah. doesn't matter if you have a small home or a large home, a big roof, small roof, doesn't matter. So at least give someone something so that like you can value their time. Like we're trying to, we've sold, that was one of the questions this contractor had. It's like, we've sold roofs since 2019 online. I've never met the customer. They've written a five-star review. It was a very profitable job. It's because they value their time. They don't want to meet with three or four contractors yes so it's another, and, and what you do and and how you train people to market is really really important for this because they they tell us all the time like we've watched a bunch of your videos okay well like that established trust they don't need to meet you in person necessarily they may some people still may want to we've sold a lot of jobs because of that because of the, of the tools that you bring the to, to the contracting space you're giving us that you're giving the, the customer that trust because we're building, we're actually creating the, the video content and, and answering all their, they ask you answer questions, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. People just want that certain, that certain feeling like, okay, these guys are going to take care of me. I'm already busy. They're not going to add to my plate. They're going to minimize the decisions I need to make and we can move on and that's it. You know? Yep. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That, that, yeah, there's, it's, it's an intangible thing. I, I've, I've actually been trying to find the right word for it for a while. There's a, it's, it's a combination of both saving somebody time and helping to ease their mind about the process to where they feel like they don't have to worry about it. And it's like a combination of, of both making the process easy and providing the context in which they can easily trust you. I, I, I don't even know what the right word for it is exactly, but it's, it's kind of a combination of those two things. Cause like someone can make the process easy, but then if they're shady, that's like, if you don't trust them, that's still like going to take time to think about it, but yeah, like, provide both. Yeah. The right word for that is it's like writing. It's like, okay, if you make a process easy, you can, you can write on a napkin, an estimate that's easy, right? You just, they got an estimate that day, <laughs> but you may not trust them because of, because they're writing on a napkin. <laughs> so yeah. like there is a lot to it than not just the marketing brand building piece. There's so many, th- there's no silver bullet, like for any part of this business, like you, no. you've got to have the whole thing together. Like you need to focus on marketing. Yes. You need to have sales. 
You need to have a great crew for production, administration, accounting. All those things are important. You have to do all of it. And marketing helps you, I think, more than ever. I think what you do now, Joe, helps people understand what, helps contractors understand what customers want more than ever. Because you said it like 2015, 16, 17, it was just like get leads and that was fine. Mm. But now there's the customer so much more educated. Like they, and they, and they really do. They're like, all these other guys are doing these videos and they're whatever it is. If it's YouTube, if it's Facebook, if it's whatever it is on their, their website's great. Like you, the, everyone's trying to step up their game in the roofing space. And so you, you've got to do it too. You've got to be the best. Yeah, you do. Absolutely. Um, and you know, like it or not, every homeowner has had a bad experience with a contractor. We all have, right? Uh, like this whole landscaping experience for me, like it's going to make me shy about hiring the next contractor, even if it's like a, you know, bathroom guy or, you know, whatever it might be I'm like, oh, I don't want to deal with that again. You know, I'd rather just do it myself. Um, yeah. Just providing a, uh, AJ, you're looking for a word. Um, Ryan Schantz, uh, founder of Sumo Quote, you guys probably know Ryan, uh, talked about it in his presentation as the Amazonification of a business. Amazonification of a business, right? So just like, look at what Amazon's doing. You know exactly what's going on at all. You know, wherever your package is, it's down the street, it's in Columbus, Ohio, whatever. Like you always know what's going on. Um, and so if we can apply that to our businesses, that's that's huge. Like we try to apply that to our business where, you know, we say like if, if a client is ever like emailing or calling us asking for like, hey, where's that thing you said you sent me, you know? Um, we know we dropped the ball, right? Cause like, we want to make sure that we're always putting the ball in their court and we're following up. So, um, just cause that's everyone's expectation. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent percent. Let's take a step back. I would love to talk more about your background and your story. So you kind of dropped a, a nugget there. You, you did the agency life from 2013 to 2019, right? Was that still contractor dynamics and you've just now changed? So under the same name, still the same business, or was that like a different business or? Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we were, we were good. So we didn't have to change our name, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So we ran the agency from 2013 to 2019. I grew up in the construction industry. So I had the construction background in my blood, uh, get more into that if you want, but started the contractor dynamics 2013 and yeah, I mean, full agency building websites, running ads, you know, blogging the whole deal, SEO, all that stuff. And we did pretty good job. And actually, John, you mentioned, they ask you answer basically builds up a national brand, um, based on Marcus Sheridan's strategy of, they ask you answer back then I'm dating myself. It was more blog posts. So I'd like write blog posts every day about contractor marketing, construction marketing, remodeler marketing, you know, roofer marketing. And we were able to build up a pretty good national brand that way. Um, before, you know, like the world got super noisy, and then of course now it's translated over into social media, but yeah, the agency was good. And then, uh, back in like, back in like 2018, we started to see like, okay, you know, like we would run ads for a roofing company in Dallas or Atlanta or Denver or whatever. And it was pretty, it was pretty easy. It was like very easy. And then we started to see it got a little bit more difficult. And then we started to see like, okay, 2018, we analyzed our clients. We had like a bucket of like a, a group of clients that were paying us every month and they were getting good results. And then we had this other group of clients that were paying us every month and they weren't really getting great results. And like, as the owner that like kept me up at night, literally, like I, I hate that. Right. So we're like, well, what's, what's the difference here? Like, let's look at the patterns. Um, uh, so when you have a, you know, a client base, you can start to look at some patterns. And so the guys who were doing well were the ones that were involved in their marketing, right? They're sending us videos that we could use to run for in their Facebook ads. They're, you know, getting on their, their, uh, their monthly call with us or weekly call with us to review the data and all of the things, right? They're letting us know like, Hey guys, we're doing this home show. Can we do some marketing around this home show next week? You know, that sort of thing. So those guys were doing well. And then the other guys, um, we're just, they just want to pay us to make their phone ring. Right. And then like, we already talked about that that was easy and then it became increasingly more difficult. So we started developing training to help some of those clients be better clients. Like, like, Hey, uh, AJ, I'm going to tell you to do this video. I'm going to script it out. I remember sitting in my office and actually doing the video as if I were the client and then sending the video to them being like, Hey, just do this video. Like I just did it. Well, you know, they did, did okay, but like they weren't used to doing video. They were scared to death. They were uncomfortable, like all those things. Right. 
Um, so we ended up developing a lot of training content, basically help our clients be better clients. And then we just kind of saw like where things were going. And like, if you really want to stand out, if you really want to build like a strong, reputable brand, uh, you've got to be doing some of this marketing in house, uh, namely like the videos and the social media stuff. It's really, really hard to outsource that. And so, yeah, in 2019, we flipped the switch and we, we stopped the agency services, um, you know, sold off some of that. And then we transitioned fully into training. So today we don't do anything. We don't do websites or ads, hundred percent, uh, education. That's, that's all we do. That's awesome. That must've been kind of a scary switch. Did you have still a lot of clients that were on your agency services at that time or had, yeah. I mean, as you guys know, monthly recurring revenue is like, you know, that's what you want. Right. And we had yeah. that. Um, it wasn't hundred percent quality revenue, but it was like monthly recurring revenue. You know, we had a full office of people and um, yeah, we, we made sure those clients were in good hands. We handed them off to people that we knew and trusted and things like that. And um, we got rid of, I, I think, you know, uh, all of the people in the office. Um, all, yeah, no, not all, most. And just kind of transitioned. And that was part of my leadership and my growth as a, as an entrepreneur, I realized that, you know, I needed to step up my leadership and maybe they weren't the right people anyway to, to kind of like continue on this journey. So, you know, we kind of cleaned house a little bit and, um, moved on from there. So, yeah, I mean, effectively, you know, eight years, seven, eight years into our business, we almost started from scratch, um, which is a little scary, uh, but it works. I feel you. So I'm doing that right now. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, that's, um, what? yeah. Oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? No, I mean, you just kind of have to weigh the past. It was like, yeah, we continue that down this agency route, which AJ, as you know, it's like very, both of you guys know, it's very, very difficult. And, you know, for a couple of reasons, we didn't want to do that. And we really wanted to try out the education thing. So it was just kind of like, Hey, this is day one of the business. Forget what we've done in the past. What do we want to build moving forward? And it was the the training company. So I'm glad we made that we made that decision, you know? Yeah. No, hundred percent. It seems to be it seems to be going well for you. I mean, I, I see you everywhere. <laughs> I feel like it's it, it you know, it's ramped up for the last the last few years, but you know, I can't I can't even open Facebook anymore without seeing you. It, it, if it's not your video, it's somebody else's video, which is awesome. Yeah. Well, it doesn't mean we're doing well. That just means we put out a lot of content, right? I know it's like, that's the thing when people see you on social media, like, oh, you guys are killing it, right? Yeah, we're doing great. But like, sometimes we're not. And sometimes things are like not going very well. I'm like, actually, no, like we're still putting out a lot of content, but you know, we're not just, we're not killing it just because there's a lot of content out there. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's going well. And I think a lot of, I think for the first few years, I think we were honestly kind of early for the industry because like most of the roofing industry does not care about marketing education. Um, we've seen over the past year or so a really kind of big like shift toward, you know, more companies caring about that for a few different reasons. Um, so that's been cool. But yeah, I mean, it was frustrating for a couple of years because we're like, yeah, we we get it. And we, you know, we work really hard to find our clients who really get it. But at the end of the day, like most roofing companies don't get it and they don't really care yet. And we've had like consultants kind of tell us like, man, you guys might be a little bit early because, you know, roofing is kind of like, you know, behind the times in terms of regular businesses, if you will. What, yeah, what, to dig into that deeper, what are the reasons that you're seeing that shift now? So, you know, more roofing companies, um, as you guys know, more uh, you know, harder to stand out, right? Like there's more the, these PE companies coming in and consolidation and all that. But I think again, back to like the consumer, the end user, it's like, um, it's what they demand, right? They demand not just like ads, right? They, they, we want to see videos like John, you talked about that. We want to feel like we trust these people. We want to feel like we have our answers. Like we're doing, we're doing, you know, 70% of the research is done before someone reaches out to a company for the first time, right? We're looking up, you know, answers to our questions and things like that. Uh, and then also like from the contracting company perspective, I would say that, you know, starting with say COVID 2020, 21, 22, maybe a little bit of 23, uh, roof, the roofing industry was like blowing up, right? Cause exterior services were, quote unquote, essential, uh, people were spending money, there's free money coming out, government's printing money, 
um, you know, you guys know, like the roofing industry, like exploded. Right. And I think there are a lot of companies that, that did really well. Um, and they didn't really have to do any marketing and there are companies that did really well. And they threw a bunch of money at marketing at agencies or whatever, and they're doing so well and making, you know, sales covers a lot of sins, right? Like they're doing so well that they didn't really have to like, look at, Oh, am I getting an ROI on marketing? It's like, no, I'm killing it. We tripled our business this year. Like, I don't care what I'm spending on marketing, you know? And I think now there's been a little, you know, maybe a little bit of a you know, adjustment, correction, whatever the heck you want to call it. And now you have a lot of companies like roofing companies looking at like, Oh, we're spending five grand a month on this. We're spending 10 grand a month on that. Like two grand a month on that. Like what exactly are we spending money on and what are we getting? And just, you know, a little bit more scrutiny on like where that money's going. And, um, yeah, they're starting to say like, man, that's just not working anymore. Right. So I think that, that, you know, that pain has reached a threshold where like, all right, well, I've tried like five different marketing agencies and none of them have worked and great. There's some good ones out there for sure. But like, okay, now I understand I need to build a, like my brand and differentiate and put out my content and things like that. So just a few things that we've seen that we try to like, you know, we're always like looking at like, you know, what's working, what's not. Um, if we're getting an influx of like good, you know, leads, appointments and sales, why is that? So we can continue on that train, you know? So I think that's a big one though. I think a lot of roofing companies were just, just, you know, spending money and not caring what was going on. And now just kind of looking at like everything and, and realizing that like most marketers are not really um, good. Let's just say that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot, <laughs> a yeah. lot more marketers and there are good well, marketers. Well, just like roofing, like the barrier to entry is so low. Right. There's just a million of them, you know? Yep. That no, mm -hmm. makes sense. That makes sense. Um, Let's take one more, one more step back and get a little bit more of your backstory. So I did see, so you grew up in marine construction. Tell us just a little bit about that and how that, how is there, it seems like a, it's construction, but it's pretty different. How much of that carries over into the roofing world? Zero. No, I wouldn't say zero, <laughs> but like it's very, it's yeah. I mean, you guys know the construction industry is freaking gigantic. Like I was just mm -hmm. talking to my, my dad about this yesterday. Um, so yeah, I grew up in my family business, Hughes Marine firms, uh, as a sixth generation family member, that business started in 1894. So they're 130 years old. Um, so a little, little startup. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they, they do uh based here in New Jersey and up in New York city and they operate up and down the East coast and, um, basically maritime construction, barges, tugboats, cranes, heavy maritime equipment. So if you're building a bridge, you're doing any kind of infrastructure on the water, uh, coastwise transportation. If you have to, if you have to transport like a big, like power plant module from like Maine to like new Orleans, uh, you put it on a barge and that's how you do it. Cause it's too big for rail or truck. A lot of like the, like a lot of things that people don't normally think about in their day to day, uh, day to day, but like essential, you know, services for the economy. So yeah, I grew up in that biz. Uh, my first job was out in the shipyard in Brooklyn, New York when I was 14, painting tugboats. I was welding steel, driving a forklift, uh, doing all sorts of fun blue collar stuff as a teenage boy, like everything but but operate the crane uh, because obviously you need a license and that's probably a good thing, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, learned a lot. I uh, got to work with my cousins who are about my age. So out there in a the shipyard doing all that. And then after college, I graduated into the office in New Jersey, um, you know, traded in the, in the blue collar for the white collar and learned a lot about small business, uh, every aspect, you know, every aspect of small business. And it was cool. Um, and it was about 2012 and we we're having our first kid. I was about 30 years old and I was, you know, just kind of looking at my life and be like, all right, well, you know, I could do this for the next 35, 40 years and do pretty well. And, you know, good, good income, you know, not baller level, but like, good income, health benefits, company car, you know, the whole deal, like job security. Um, but I had that entrepreneurial bone in my body, which you guys and a lot of our, the listeners will, will relate to. And I was like, you know what? Like we got one life to live. I want to go out and see what I can create on my own. And uh, yeah, so I left the family business um, on good terms. I know most people don't usually leave a family business on good terms, but uh, I did. And, you know, my dad and my two uncles are the owners. I still have great relationships with them and they're, they're doing great. Um, I've got cousins that are my generation that are in the business. So I didn't like end the 
130 year old reign. I couldn't have done that, but, uh, I got four cousins that are, you know, in that, in that generation of the business. So yeah, I grew up in that. And, um, I learned a lot about business. I also learned a lot about like, especially out in the shipyard, out in the field, like working alongside people from literally all over the world. Like, and these guys, like guys, mostly guys, um, from all over the world, like working in the shipyard in Brooklyn, like that's the dream. Like they are living the dream, right? Hard work, you know, out there in the hot summers, cold winters, and just like working with people from different backgrounds. And I think that helped me to, to build a tremendous sense of like, like just empathy, like understanding people. And um, yeah, I mean, that was a really cool experience. Like looking back on it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. It's like it sounds almost like you did you traveled without traveling. You traveled in one place in a way. Yeah. 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 I mean, dude, like ton of guys from uh Philippines, Spain, South America, Caribbean, like you name it. Um, so yeah, it was it was cool. I got an education in more ways than one. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. So that was so then that's when you jumped out and did the marketing agency. Was that true? Yeah, I left in 2012. Uh I don't want to say screwed around. Well, uh, try to figure out what I was going to do and all that for a few months. Then yeah, 2013 started contractor dynamics. Yeah. Jumped into it. Jumped into it. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You're not um... knowing, not knowing what I was doing. Like, you know, I have a, I have a finance degree from a pretty good college, you know, worked in the family biz for a while. Like I thought I knew more than I actually did, you know, but as you guys know, you don't, you don't know what you're doing until you actually go out there and put yourself out there and test out your idea. Um, and that's how you just develop those business skills. Right. And yeah. I think like going back to like the roofing industry, contracting industry, like with a marketing education thing, it's just a skill set that we need to develop. Like, just like I need to learn how to like, you know, do the finances of my business or, you know, any other aspect. Right. Like we, we think we know it all. We think it's simple, but it's more complex than it, than it really not, maybe not co more complex, but it takes longer and it's definitely not as easy as we expect. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> there you go. Mike Tyson, baby. So true. But so yeah. true. Yeah. It's uh, I, there's some LinkedIn post I saw the other day that was um, talking about how you got to be on to be an entrepreneur. You got to be obsessed because it's yeah. just, it's punishment. It's, it's nonstop punishment. And, uh, if you don't, if, if you, if you can't, if you're not obsessed, then you, you, it's, it's hard to put up with, but if you stick yeah. at the game and you just keep learning, taking the punches and learning, like using those as the motivation for, you know, continuing to learn then, then, um, you know, it adds up over time. It does. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's, it's not always easy to do in the moment when you're getting your teeth kicked in, you're like, yes, this is a great learning experience. I'm excited <laughs> about this, you know? But yeah. yeah, looking back on it. Yeah. I mean, as long as you're, as long as you learn from that mistake and you're not making that mistake over and over again, like that is the name of the game. Um, yeah, totally. Yep. I love that. We all um, always need to be learning too. Like, and never, never think, you know, everything too. Like it's, I, I feel like I, I love that part of being an, uh, an entrepreneur. Like I love that, that I don't know it all. There's always things that I can improve on and be better at and help more people like what understand your vision, understand your why. Like there's, there's so many parts of this. That's so fun that you just can't do. If you are an employee somewhere, you, you can, you have the freedom to help people in different ways, help your team in different ways. You know, obviously you can make more money. You can lose money. You, you can learn a lot, a lot of ways. Uh, there's nothing better than this. I, I love it. Absolutely. And anyone who's in the contracting space, that's what it is. It's not about selling and building roofs. It's about, there's so much more to that. If you want to be in this business for a long time or any business for a long time, it's be willing to learn and be willing to improve every day. That's it, John, man. It is, is it is fun. Man. It's a game. It's an infinite, infinite game. Simon Sinek wrote that book. Uh, start with why, which a lot of people yep. know, but he also wrote a book called the infinite game, which I love even more because that's what it is, man. We're just playing this game and you've got to, you've got to love it. And there are so many opportunities we get to do this, right? It's such a blessing to be able to do this. Um, you know, I'm, 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 you know, I'm American. I'm born in the U S and I know that, you know, we have a lot of, I love like our immigrant, I love all of our clients, but we have like immigrant clients who like, they just have a different perspective, right? Cause mm -hmm. they come from countries yep. that 
you know, that made that there's not that opportunity. Right. And we have this opportunity and I try not to take it for granted. I'm sure I do. Um, but, uh, but yeah, man, it's such a fun, it's such a fun opportunity for sure. Yeah. I, I, I identify, with, I mean, I, I'm, we're having the same experience. We have a lot of users that are immigrants, immigrants, and it's so cool to see them get to take part in the American experience and, 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 and pursue the American dream. Um, we actually just started recently growing our support team, our support and onboarding team. And mm -hmm. we made the decision to, we were ex exclusive, pretty much exclusively hiring bilingual support agents mm. that are able to speak uh, most of them Spanish, but we're also like finding some other languages as well. And mm. the goal is because, because most, you know, if they're in the U S or Canada, they probably can, um, you know, speak English fluently, but some of them struggle. It's a lot easier if they can, when they're, especially when they're talking about complex things like setting up software, it's so nice for them to be able to talk to someone that speaks the same language, but like the f same first language. And so we've, we've started pursuing that. Um, and it's, it's, it's been cool. We've been able to make some like connections and see like the light bulb turn on a little bit more for some of these users that we have. And that's just really exciting. That's huge. That's, that's great. As part of our long-term vision is to have all of our training programs in Spanish and have some Spanish trainers as well. Uh, but that's our 10 year in, in our 10 year vision, but it probably should happen sooner than later. Cause that's, you know, that's where the world is going. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's jump into some, some kind of tactical stuff here. See if we can give our listeners some, some really, you know, value driven takeaways. What you, you mentioned before, you know, the importance of differentiating roofing mm -hmm. uh, roofing company in today's world with how competitive it is. You got to stand out from the crowd. What are the, and, and obviously it's hard to just put, just make a list of this because it, it can be different for every company and market, but maybe give some examples of some of the, the best differentiations you've seen. I don't know if that's, you approach it yeah. however you want, but. Yeah, I mean, so we do, you know, we get to talk with contractors every day that are interested in, you know, whether it's on like one of our Facebook lives at one of our events that we do in person or whether it's like, you know, prospective clients who are interested in, in what we do and how we can help them. And so we do, you know, kind of like sometimes we'll do like an in-depth audit of all their like online presence or sometimes like me just in the DMs, I'll be like, just give someone some feedback and like 90 eight percent of the time like our number one point of feedback is you need more faces on video and like that's that's it we already talked about it right like john you talked about it and even in 2024 like it's still it's still a huge opportunity just more faces on video so i'll go to roofing contractors you know the website their facebook page or instagram and it's like they're posting reviews they're posting like the if, if they're working you can always tell if a roofer, a roofing company has hired like someone to do their social media for like, you know, 400 bucks a month or whatever. It's like the generic stock photos. It's like the generic posts, like all this stuff that has zero value. And it's like the number one feedback is like, we need more faces on video. So that's, that's still the big thing. And like, you know, there might be owners out there listening to this or like, no, I don't, that's not going to be me. And that's fine. Like we have some clients where like the owner is nowhere to be found online but they've, you know, enlisted the few people on their team, maybe the GM or some of the salesmen, uh, salesmen and women, uh, sales reps, uh, to get out there and be on, on video and whatnot. But at the end of the day, like, yeah, like we talked about, you know, we want to build trust. We want to, um, everyone's got these, you know, past bad experiences with the contractors want to overcome that. We want to help them feel like they're making a risk-free decision and hiring us. We don't want them to feel like they're rolling the dice when they hire us or even call us out to do an estimate. So faces on video, you know, answering those questions, like John mentioned, they ask you answer, answering the questions that people have, um, you know, showing people that you're, you're in their neighborhood, showing people what you're doing on a daily basis. It doesn't need to be highly produced. In fact, it shouldn't like the raw videos are great. Um, just showing people that you're out and about, you're involved in the community, uh, just building that trust, just doing that every day. Like that is still the biggest needle mover that we see for sure. Um, the other thing we talked about was, you know, the, the touch points in the, in the, you know, the appointment process, 
sales process, you know, the, the production process, the post job process, like those little text messages, emails, just letting people know that you're, um, you know, you're on top of your game. Um, in terms of marketing, there is no, and John mentioned it, John, you mentioned it before, like there's no one thing, right? Like back in the day, yeah, you could just like run Facebook ads and build an amazing roofing company. You could run Google ads and just crush it, right? Now it's like just, there's just not one thing because again, consumers are doing their research. Like they're going to websites, they're going to social media profiles, they're going to Google, they're checking out reviews. Like they're just like, you know, they're they're thinking about, hey, who do I see out in the community? They're going into a local Facebook or next door group and asking like, hey, who recommends a local roofer, you know? So like- there's all these different points that they're getting their information from. So you, you've got to be, I don't want to say you've got to be everywhere, but there definitely are different parts to it. It's not just like one channel. It's not just like one thing. Um, but the good thing about video is that you guys know, like you can record a video and you put it on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, maybe on YouTube. You can use that video in your sales process, you know, put it in your CRM and put it into an automation um, you can repurpose a lot of that content, um, to get some more mileage out of it. So that's the number one thing, more faces on video. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so it sounds like the best way you can differentiate yourself is yourself. It, you, someone in someone associated with the business being on camera, being making their face visible, um, as opposed to being, I had, yeah, I hadn't, I think when so, a lot of people think about differentiating themselves, they, at least I first jump to, you know, how, how do we, how is our process different or how is our pricing different or how is the product different? But that's, that's the, the one thing that you can't, no one can duplicate is your face. Well, I yeah, guess well that, you know, that AI stuff is them. like, you know, save those things for the sales process or, you know, the sales presentation, right. Uh, yeah. Talk about your warranties or about like how you do things different or whatever that might be. But mm -hmm. like, to like marketing, the job of marketing is to generate the demand and then Java sales to convert that demand into a client, right? So if we're talking about marketing, generating that demand. Yeah, like don't talk about your product. Don't talk about your warranties. Don't talk about GAF or certainty or OC or whatever, because, you know, homeowners don't know that. They don't know those terms uh, or those brands rather. Maybe OC, it depends, you know, it's all regional. Um, but there's some regionality to it. But just sell you, right? Just sell like, hey, AJ's, seems like a good guy. seems like they run a good company. I want them to come out and do my, you know, give me an estimate. Right. Um, there's a company out in, I think Oregon or, or Washington Pacific Northwest. Um, not Loveland, uh, Sean, I'm drawing, I'm drawing a blank, but on their website, it's, uh, get three estimates. Just make sure that we're one of them. Right? Yeah. I, yeah. I love that. Yeah. So, um, it's love or something. Valentine roofing, Valentine roofing. <laughs> Uh, Sean Valentine. Um, yeah. So that's it. Like, just make sure that we're one of them and like build that trust to just get in the door. Right. Mm. Um, so I think I went on a tangent there, but yeah, no, that's, that's <laughs> great. I, I like it's that. really good. I mean, we talk about, they ask you answer a lot, but like breaking it down, if you have objections, like if people say, well, you're too expensive, well, let's talk about all the ways, make a video for all the reasons why you cost what you cost. And keep doing that and and then iterate it and then ask another question that's related that you've heard from a customer. Just put yourself in the customer's shoes. Like, don't think about from roofing contractor perspective. This is what you should know. Mm, think about from what they're asking you and like, just make you make, I sat, I've said this a million times on a different podcast for an entire month. I sat in my office and every day I would go get breakfast on the way to work. And I would put the, the breakfast on my desk and I would, I had a, a camera set up and I would make video, a different video each day until I was like, this is a good video. I would make this and then I would delete it and then mm. I would do it again and then do it again. And then that's how I'd earn my breakfast each day. And I, I wasn't good at it, but I, but I knew my videographer was coming to shoot some videos in a, in a month. So I was like, I'm going to be good at these five videos. And so in like a, a relatively short period of time. He set up all of his crap. It was amazing. Super professional stuff in my office. And we knocked out like seven videos that were really, really important for our business. And I would, the only way to do that is to practice 
It's just mm-hmm. like, I'm just not naturally good at that. So I, I, I said, this is important. Customers need to hear this. And this is a way that we can set out. And we've had so many homeowners be like, I watched your videos. I watched all of them. I'm like, yeah. that's what you, that's the point. That's why we made them <laughs> so that you, you have confidence in choosing us as your roofing contractor. It takes time, effort, and energy. It, it does. It does. It takes, you, you have to do it though. Would you say, John, that those videos have, uh, when was that? When, when would you do that? That was a, a couple of years ago okay. and I've done it again. I mean, the same, we, we continue to shoot content. We shoot every week, actually, just so you know, in the past two months, we've shot every single week. Uh, we have, we hired, we hired a new, um, marketing person that's local to my market. Cool. And so she comes with like one or two helpers and they, they make us like animate on, on camera. Like they, Mm -hmm. they, the three of them help us and clay and Cameron soon. Like we're, we're trying to not only just produce, answer the questions like a robot, but like right. actually get out of your shell a little bit. Yeah. Get be way uncomfortable. Yeah. And, but, but it's really helpful when I watch it back. I'm like, I, I thought I was like cussing at the customer and I'm like, <laughs> it's like so muted compared to what my brain is thinking. And I think a lot of roofing contractors feel that way too. Like I don't, you know, I'm being so crazy. Like you're not, you're not being crazy. Just, yeah. Just try to be yourself. Like, and I know people say this all the time, just pretend the camera is a human. That's, that's, so much easier said than done making that camera a, a person mm. it takes effort for most people it takes a lot of effort and consistency so we're yeah we've been we went from like zero to 111 no yeah we're building our subscribers on youtube like we're we're doing a lot of things like we're trying to re because we rebranded so we had to like hide all of our delaria roofing videos so now we have to mm. remake all those videos and um yeah people told us the last couple of customers like we, i watched 10 of your videos. I'm like, yes, please. Yes. And you know that, you know, that's like maybe not a layup, but like, you know, that's going to be all right. Like that's going to be a pretty easy sale. Like yep. we're not, we're not going to get beat up on price. They're going to be a good customer. Probably going to get better referrals from them, you know, like, and that, that all starts with that domino of them watching that content. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. what I was getting at is like the batching thing. Yes. Batch it. That's what we try to do as much as possible. I had a, video day on Thursday. I did nothing but video sitting here in this chair uh, for like eight hours. And like, it, it's hard. Like the first four, ho- first four hours, I was just, I could not focus. Um, I think I had too much coffee. I think I was so excited for my video day. I had too much coffee and like, I couldn't focus. And uh, so I didn't start actually shoot like recording until like 3 PM. And, um, and I was like, I needed to like coach myself. Right. Cause I just wasn't feeling it. I was like, dude, if I nail these videos, like these videos are going to be worth over a million dollars to our company. Like literally, like, cause we're going to use them with, for ads and different things. Right. One of them is going to be like a VSL, like a video sales letter. So I was like, if I nail these, like that's like a million dollars in revenue for our company over the next couple of years. Um, so like get your act together and like buckle down and do it. Right. So my lesson there, and then John, like you guys know this, like, just think about that. Like, think about like, it's not just doing videos. It's like, Hey, these videos are going to be like responsible for like generating, you know, revenue for our business, which in turn is going to provide, you know, jobs for our, you know, our people, uh, we're going to be able to, you know, we're going to be able to work with homeowners and help them actually get a good roof instead of going with some shady contractor. Uh, that's a huge motivation, you know? Um, so yeah, just think about the why you mentioned that John before, like the why it's so big when doing this video content because it is new, you know, it's uncomfortable. It's not something that most people are already doing on a weekly basis. It takes time. It takes energy. It takes money. It's hard. Um, so if we don't have a big why, then we're just not going to stick with it. So true. You have to understand what you, I mean, if you really, if you can get down to your why, I mean, part of my why is like, I want to help people in a real way. I want, I want to them to not have those terrible stories. And I, I take yeah. it personally, like if, a, if we don't win a job and I think that we should win the job, their ideal customer, and everything. Yes. We wanted that revenue. We wanted that profit. But what hurts is when they walk up to me in the grocery parking lot and they're like, I knew I should, we just did like three repairs this the past week. Cameron did three repairs and they're like, I knew I should have hired John and they, their roof is brand new. 
Yeah. Like it's within three or four years old. I'm like, Man. and that's how I know I failed. Cause I'm like, I didn't make enough videos to answer those questions to establish trust. Cause the, you know, it's, it's hard. And it's like, they're they've spent the money they have a brand new roof that's leaking and it's oh just, man i hate that, that yeah that's the worst yeah mm. yeah i mean we get that all the time too it's like oh i just you know i uh, just spent you know five grand a month in this marketing agency for six months they didn't get anything so yeah i should have called you guys in the first place I'm like all right well whatever we're talking now it's all good yep yep um I have an idea to pass by Joe. I want your input on this. I, I don't right. know. Maybe have you seen any of your clients or um, have you seen any success with leveraging Facebook groups that are created by your, your customers and then leveraged to, to like put, get local people into those groups and then use them for marketing. Have you seen that get used successfully? Yes. Uh, a couple of our clients have started or bought local groups because there's always groups out there that are kind of like stale and like yeah. you can approach the owner and, you know, offer them whatever you want for that group. So you own that, that group for sure. Yeah, Actually, that's how, that's how I started my business, but that's a whole other, that's not really going to answer your question. Um, I mean, you guys know Amanda V not right. I know John, you know her here in New Jersey, yeah. yep. her thing. so like, that's what she did. Uh, kind of accidentally though. I mean, she started this like mom group years ago when she had another business. Um, and then she started a roofing company last year. And then she, she already had this group of like thousands of like moms in this like local area, uh, which is like, that's what you want. Right. So she's been able to do that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, even if you don't, if you didn't start a group five years ago, like she did, uh, you can start one or you can buy one. Um, or if you don't own one, then, you know, that's a strategy a lot of our clients use, like go into the groups on a regular basis and don't spam, you know, mm -hmm. just add value, right? Add those educational videos, you know, drop those in there. Um, because I always talk about it, right? Like the five mile famous thing, like you're not just marketing to your next customer, like you're marketing to anyone that can refer you or mention you or tag you or whatever. So the more you're just dripping out that value, the more top of mind like Peach State Roofing is going to be, you know? Yeah, it's very true. We've already gotten, I mean, so because we rebranded, we're, we're trying more than ever. I've never been great at networking or networking events or BNI. Like that's not, I've always, exactly what you said, I relied on like SEO, our online presence, reviews. So more than ever, we're trying to, specifically on Facebook, um, interact with really influential people Mm. and just provide just like provide value like not talk about roofing just say you know promote other people with a no ask at all and just become consistently seen with comments not just you can't just like every com everything you have to actually provide some value typically in yes. a comment or like you got to do that so um yeah we've been trying to be way more consistent with that and we've already gotten a couple like referral partners because of that cuz they're like nobody else will share our stuff like you're <laughs> you're yes. like check your website out like this you know it's they want it too they yeah. realtors insurance agents other business owners they want interaction as well and that helps them so just think Absolutely. about how they got there. yeah you start tagging them you start recommending them and yeah that's that's that I love that that's awesome yeah, more advanced strategy that some of our clients are doing is like the local podcast, like just what we're doing here, right? We're just kind of chatting it up, like do that on a local level and like interview the local, you know, restaurant owner or chiropractor or whatever, and, you know, make them famous, put out content about them. You're going to tap into their audience and, you know, they're going to become a champion of yours and and vice versa. So that's a more advanced strategy. But um, yeah, I think there's a lot of roofers out there that that I've seen that they start podcasts and they, they talk about like, you know, roofing, like, you know, like roofing industry stuff. Right. But like their local market doesn't care about that. So like, yeah. just keep it local. Yeah. It's very true. Yeah. That's, that's super interesting. I like, um, I like donuts. So just talk about a bunch of really good donuts, just the donuts from the whole region. Everybody always fights about that. It's got the best, whatever. <laughs> like, you yeah. Yeah. You're you're tempting me right now. I, I'm try I swore off donuts this week. I need I no. need to I realize you gotta go eat so them. 
I, I saw you on a video recently, Joe, you were talking about, you've had a recent fitness journey with, uh, with getting, getting into, into better shape. Is that correct? Uh, no, I mean, I, I, it's been 30 years, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always like doing stuff. Yeah. I mean, I'm always training for something. I'm always doing yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's a big part of my life for sure. No, that's awesome. Well, no, I mean, but uh, it was, it was some video from like last fall and you were saying, that Oh, I did a, uh, I did my first, level. yeah, I did my first trail marathon in Colorado. Was that it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think that's what you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That was super awesome. fun. I do one a year. That's my minimum. Uh, so like I'm a big identity guy. So if like, if I want to maintain my identity as an athlete, uh, and a runner, then I have to do a marathon one, you know, at least one marathon a year. So yeah. just do that. Um, so that was my one for last year. That was so much fun. Um, nice. I mean, I live at sea level here in Jersey. I ran the other day and like my, my, I ran for two hours, 12 miles and my elevation gain was seven feet. <laughs> so like i, I live that. at sea level right so yeah. like going out there and starting at five thousand six thousand feet or whatever like that's totally outside my comfort zone it was so much fun uh actually i'm doing a, a 24-hour endurance event down in uh in northwest georgia in july With so jesse itzler uh it's chad Wright. oh nice you know chad are familiar with him i know yeah i know who he is yeah, yep. he's boys with Jesse. Um, yeah, so I'm going down there for that, which is at altitude and it's 24 hours. So uh I don't know. It's just, you know, I'm training for that right now. So that's in July, July 13th. Oh, two months from today. Cool. Nice. Nice. It's that's gonna be awesome. real hot. Yeah, yeah. Um and humid. Yeah, I was looking at the the equipment list that they tell you to bring. It's like uh snake proof gators and like yep. all this like random stuff. I'm like, dude, what? Like, what is that? I don't even know what this stuff is. Oh man. That's awesome. Well, that's, that's super cool. That's, uh, yeah. Good, good luck. Good luck on that. I was, so, y'all need it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> are you, uh, so it's down, are you going to be coming through, uh, Hartsfield Jackson? Um, are you going to be flying into Atlanta or somewhere else? Yeah. That for that. Yeah. Yeah. For that. that. Yeah. Cool. May yeah. Have, may, uh, I think we'll have, our our podcast studio up by then so maybe we'll have to do a it is very excited about that i am too though yeah that's really cool man that's that's awesome i mean i would love to i'll probably be in and out but we'll see yeah yeah we'll see we'll see if we can make some work but yeah yeah, of course we're we're talking with uh because we do these marketing workshops uh throughout the country uh atlanta's on the list for like second half of the year um we're just trying to figure that out so Orlando, Atlanta, Nashville. Um, I don't know. We got to figure that out. So possibly. Yeah. Cool. We'll make some. I've actually never, I've actually never been to Atlanta. I mean, other than, other than the airport. Yeah. Yeah. Just through the airport. Yeah. That makes sense. Cool. Well, let's, uh, let's wrap, wrap this up. Uh, we usually just end with a, with a quick question. What are you looking forward to the most in the coming week? In the coming week, man, that's a, that's a good one. Um, Let's see. We're adding someone to our leadership team this week. We have a leadership team of four and uh, we are adding someone this week, elevating her from within. Uh, so that's really exciting. Um, yeah, we have a great team and she's excited. We're excited. So that's a, that's a big thing that's on tap for this week for sure. Nice. Sweet. Nice. Yeah. John. It's raining right now. I love rain because it makes roof leaks. So we had, <laughs> it hasn't been raining in a long time, like weeks and weeks and weeks. So I I feel for the people in California and Arizona it never, never rains. So, uh, yeah, we just getting more busy because of the rain. We're doing a bunch of, we're doing a ton of repairs. So I'm like, I'm excited. I just, I like growing the business. I do. I like, I like when Clay and Cameron win. I like when Kathleen and Tisha are feeling good about their days and their weeks. Like that's, that's how it's Monday. We're recording this Monday. So another start of a week, which I love. I love to grow. Cool stuff. I'm, uh, we're going to be doing for pro on all day planning, planning session slash day with, um, 
bunch of our team and investors and just doing, you know, the whole end to end strategy, just looking at everything. I mean, we have a pretty laid out strategy, but we just want to make sure we're on track. Um, and so we just do, we usually will do this once a year, but we're doing sort of a mid year, um, one this year, just to, to make sure we're in the in the right direction. So I'm excited for that. It's going to be fun. That's cool. It's always good to check in and make sure on the, on the same page. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We, we raised some money, um, some funding in March. So that kind of changed a few things we have. to Awesome. We have, and we can change some of the trajectories and, and timelines on things. So. Mm. Oh yeah. Congrats. I didn't know that. That's very cool. Thanks. Yeah. I, I guess we've kept it on the low. I, this might be the first time I've mentioned it on the podcast, but it's okay. nothing, nothing too crazy, but we, uh, we just wanted to make sure we're able to deliver the best possible, uh, best possible solution to our customers. And we didn't want yeah. it to be a limiting factor. So nice, yeah. but all right. Uh, so we'll wrap up there. Thanks uh, for joining us, Joe. And thanks for everyone for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Bye everybody. Thank you guys. Thank you.